Is uh, growth here a good thing as a native Idahoan or a bad thing? I think it's becoming a bad thing. It's definitely blown up a bit. Um, you're noticing it on the roads for sure. It's an inconvenience, certainly. It's harder to get around and so forth, but it brings good things too. It's, it's horrible. The roads take forever to travel back and forth between Nampa and Boise. Growth in the Treasure Valley is the topic among residents. Natives and newcomers alike all talk about how growth impacts them and their daily lives in ways that are both good and bad. New population numbers just released from the Community Planning Association of Southwest Idaho show eye-popping growth in cities across the Treasure Valley's two-county region. But what's even more remarkable than where we are right now is where we're going. Think 21 years from now, in the year 2040. Brace yourself, we're about to look inside a crystal ball in a picture that many do not think is a pretty one. But to do that, we need to take a step back, 30 years back. This is Boise as we know it today, Idaho's capital city in the year 1989. Sparked by local concern over the rate of growth in the capital city, KTBB produced a one-hour town hall discussion at the tail end of 1989. It featured community leaders and citizens all bracing for what they all knew was coming. Is this boom going to last? How long is it going to last? Should it last? The community-funded Ada Planning Association was projecting that 20 years from then, in the year 2010, Ada County's population would be 290,000. They missed the mark by over 100,000. The 2010 census had the county's population at 392,000. Ada Planning would give way to Compass, the Community Planning Association of Southwest Idaho, and the focus on growth broadened to the two counties and unincorporated areas of the region, and suddenly all eyes were on the scope of growth throughout the Treasure Valley and not solely on the capital city. 2006, and Compass Director Matt Stoll sat down with us to talk about the new Communities in Motion 2030 study that had a very bleak outlook for the region and its ability to keep up with growth that had been underestimated years earlier. Infrastructure and public transportation needed to be expanded to accommodate all of the new developments. State, county, and local governments were slow to answer the call for action. If we don't change our patterns, then um, <laughs> it'd be a lost cause. Now, 13 years later, and a couple hundred thousand more residents with hundreds of thousands still to come. And the question remains, is it a lost cause? Basically, if you're adding in over 300,000 people, uh, the existing transportation infrastructure is not going to be adequate to move those folks around. We have um, 1,022,000 people moving into the valley by the year 2040. Wait. What? Did he just say? 1,022,000 people moving into the valley by the year 2040. That's what we're projecting. 1 million people here in the next 20 years. Some think it could happen sooner. What does it mean? Okay, so let's get to the heart of this. This is Compass's density map from 2010, and you can see where the population of 580,000 is primarily located. Fast forward now to the projections in 2040. One million people in this two county area with pockets of 30 to 40 people located in clusters highlighted here in red. Fast forward, they didn't stop there. What they call the build out, 10, 15, 20 years after that last projection, 2.7 million people. Your current teenagers now in their 40s, living in a region that is just shy of three million people. The question, how in the world do we prepare for something like this? Absolutely, there's reason for confidence. Idaho Transportation Director Brian Ness is a glass half full guy, and this is a job that requires that mantra. Idaho's former Governor Butch Otter's Transportation Task Force announced that the income from gas taxes and the fees Idaho collects to build and maintain its infrastructure was coming up $235 million short of where the state needed to be to keep up. And every year the budget gap gets a little wider due to the lack of a hedge in the system for inflation. And as is the case with anything, the older things get, 
or maintenance they need. So now we're dealing with all that, and then if you add lanes, it's a vicious circle. The I-84 corridor is the lifeline of the valley. It serves as the main artery delivering and connecting people and goods. Compass reports that right now, the commute between Caldwell and Boise averages 39 minutes. They project in 2035, that will be 62 minutes. And in 2040, 70 minutes. Until that is, the Fed stepped up. The Infrastructure for the Rebuilding of America grant, which has typically focused on larger regions around the country, also struggling to keep pace, awarded the state $90 million to widen I-84 to three lanes in each direction of a near four mile stretch of the interstate in Canyon County that has long been an issue. That's going to cut the commute time in 2040 from the projected 70 minutes down to 55 minutes. Still doesn't sound great, but they say it is a step, and now the rest appears to be up to the legislature. I think it can get better. I think the uh, legislature knows that it's a priority that, that we'll have to deal with. I expect that Governor Little will come out with some type of uh, um, comprehensive transportation plan within the uh, uh, next year or so. So let's bottom line this. The secret is out. The growth isn't going to slow down. The decision to adapt to it, says Stoll and Ness, falls squarely on the shoulders of citizens. They need to talk to their city councils across the, the region, eight in Canyon counties. They need to talk to their county commissions. They need to talk to their highway district commissioners. I believe the Idaho Transportation Department is leading the way to how we can change government and how we can have government, instead of moving at the speed of bureaucracy, move at the speed of business. Right now on our website, you have to see this, we have an interactive then and now piece to show you what some of the iconic spots in the valley looked like back then and look like now. And we also posted the story that you just saw on our Facebook page. And we would love to hear where you think the focus should be as we zoom toward the one million mark.